Hello and welcome. Thank you for tuning in to Kevin Park Ministry. My name is Miss Latisse. Well, today was a very heavy day at church. The title of the pastor's message, which I have an awesome pastor, by the way, he's such an excellent teacher. Um, but the title of his sermon was Yielding to God's Purpose. I hope I said that word word for word, but, but basically that's what he was meaning, yielding to God's divine purpose. Um, and as some of you may remember, I began this journey because over the years I have felt first a very faint calling to share my story with people. Um, and as the time went on, it got louder and louder. Uh, but since losing my oldest daughter, it's really been sounding. And then after a phone call that I had with Sister Cassandra at work, which was just unbelievable that we even connected because she should have been off. I was trying to reach her voicemail and I had trouble getting through to her voicemail and kept winding back. And then she picked up the phone. So as I look back, I definitely see God's hand in everything that has occurred since then. Um, I shared with you that I had asked her to pray for, you know, I was calling to thank her actually for calling to check on my husband and for praying for for him, um, but then prior to ending our call, I asked her to pray for me. Um, and as she did so, I just came apart. I, I just lost all control, just came apart crying. Just came out of nowhere because I didn't feel like crying, but here I was crying. Uh, so I shared with with you all how she boldly stated to me that God is going to purpose what I've been through, be it through a blog or a book. Um, and it was after that phone call, the call, or shall I say, the pull, um, and the sound, or the reminder, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but the reminder. But, but just the um, just just the restating to me that you are to share your life story just was so gripping and so pressing to me in that moment that I just cried and I cried and I you know I, I yielded you know which is basically surrendering to what the divine call, the divine purpose for my life is. Um, and as I reflect back over my life, I see how chapter by chapter by chapter, so to speak, um, the Lord has been preparing me for a time such as this. Uh, from as early as I can remember, I mean, my, my earliest remembrance of a story story or a chapter, if, if you will, in my life. No, a lesson that I was learning, that I was going through in preparation for. Uh, you know, my, my earliest re remembrance is abandonment and violence. My mother would constantly come and go out of my life as a little girl and she would always promise me that she wasn't going anywhere and then I would wake up and she would be gone um, or when she would come and get me and my sister she took us into very violent um, dangerous atmospheres 
that were not suited for children. Um, and watching her being abused and beaten in front of me, uh, you know, I, I was being prepared um, to overcome and then share with others or be a support to others um, who are over who are trying to overcome a situation like that. Um, and then it goes on and on and on, um, but the most, prior to losing my daughter, the most significant trauma that I had experienced um, as I walked through my journey of life was the suicide of my grandfather. My grandparents raised me um, because my mother was not a stable mother. Um, all of her kids, including me, um, became wards of the state. And so my grandparents came in and took over raising me. And my grandfather, he was my world. My, my grandfather, I love, love, love my grandfather. Uh, but on Mother's Day, 1979, he saw fit to wake up. Uh, he was yelling at my grandmother. And I remember being a, a kid and just laying in my bed listening to him yell and fuss at my grandmother. And just as I had gotten up uh, to go and tell my grandfather, quit yelling at, at Grandma, it's Mother's Day. In that short period of time for me to walk from my room, which was right down the hall into the kitchen where he was in his wheelchair looking out into the den, he pulled out his gun and shot my grandmother three times. Uh, then he looked at me and then he shot himself, just like that. Um, but yeah, that, that was the most significant event uh, early on in my life that uh, has stayed with me for many, many years. And I've gone through many dynamics with respect to that. Um, but nothing could have prepared me for losing my trees, for losing my, my oldest daughter. And looking back, because they say hindsight is twenty twenty. I hate cliches, but that's what they say. And now I believe that is just so true. Um, but looking back, I see that losing my daughter was the final chapter of the book of my life. Order, in, in, in preparation for the launching of me to do his purpose for my life. Um, when the sermon started, we started a sermon with a video clip. And when I looked up at the clip and I saw this, this brave mother Godly mother. Her name is Tia Coleman. She's the lady who lost her family members, three of her children, her husband, and other family members in that ferry boat. As soon as I saw her face, all I could do was say, Oh Lord. Because before the clip even played, before a word was said, I already knew the context of the sermon that was about to come. And I knew that I was going to be in a heavy place. And I found myself with such a heavy heart. But let me just take this moment and just, just pause and just send out love and support and condolences to Tia Coleman. Lord, no, I've had my experience, but I can't even begin 
to try to understand what she's going through, losing three of her children and her husband. I was reading an article. She said her house is just silent. I mean, this lady, she is my shero because she is still standing strong. And I'm gonna tell you that silence is so deafening. Um, so she is a very strong, strong woman. My hat is off to her. If, there, I, if I was close to her, if there was anything I could do, I would be there for her because I understand a portion of that pain that she's dealing with. Bless her, God bless her, and God bless her. But anyways, let, let, let me get back to this short. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to keep it short today. I'm going to try to stay under 10 minutes. Uh, but at any rate, I, I, I never, I never, I never could have been prepared for what was to come. Had I known what was to come, like Jesus knew what was to come, what his, his final moments were going to be on earth, there's no way that I could have embraced that. I don't know if I would have been able to. Um, however, Going back to when I was talking to Sister Cassandra in, in, in my driveway, I yielded to, to the Lord and I said, Lord, I, I do not want to do this, which I, it's, it's very uncomfortable. Um, it's very exposing. Uh, but I have found, this is my third time making a video. Um, and while it's not, totally comfortable um, it's becoming easier to do his divine purpose uh, for my life so I, I'm, I'm going to share a story with you and it's not a story it's actually a real life event because it's my life um, but I'm just going to tell it to you in story form um, about one of the experiences that I went through while I was searching for my daughter um, and what made me think about this particular instance. And this is why I just had to turn on the video and start talking to you all once I settled down. Uh, you know, the pastor said, how, to, how do you yield to God's will when it does not line up with yours? So basically meaning, how do I do what God wants me to do when I don't, I, I don't, I don't want that? And... For whatever reason, God saw fit to take my oldest daughter. Be careful what you say, because I would always say, ooh, if something ever happened to my daughter, I would just take myself out. Well, when you live, you learn that your words will be adjusted. Um, because as much as I wanted to die, I could not die because just as strong as that pull to end it all, the Lord saw fit to give me a visual of why I needed to fight to stay. Um, because my will did not line up with the Lord's will with respect to taking my daughter. Um, but while she was missing, I had like a King Solomon experience. And I relate a lot of things back to biblical stories because I always find myself searching, 
searching the word of the Lord, trying to understand, holding on to the word of the Lord for strength and comfort, peace of mind. And so what I mean by a King Solomon experience when my daughter was missing, it had been several days and we had still not found her. I, I, am, I have a very close relationship with my children. And I, know, I knew my daughter was not running away, trying to hide, um, to get away from me or her family because she had some, you know, secret or something. You know, this is a common thing that the officers wanted us to believe. But I knew, I knew she wasn't running. And I remember praying to the Lord because see, at first my prayer was, Lord, bring her home. Help me find my daughter. Lord, help me find my daughter. I got to find my daughter. Lord, please, please bring her home. Um, but then my prayer began to change because as those days turned into weeks, my prayer became... And I only prayed this once, but it was about two weeks in. And I said, Lord, if it be thy will, bring my daughter home to me, please. But Lord, if it's not your will for her to return, and if my baby is in bondage, I ask you to take her up to you swift and quickly, Lord. I don't want her to suffer. Lord, please don't let her suffer. Don't let her be held in bondage. I don't want her to be held in bondage. Please don't let that be your will, Lord. Please don't let that be your will. If it's your will to take her, please take her fast. Don't let her suffer the ravages of being in bondage, Lord. Um, and if you know the story of the King Solomon with the two women, um, the one woman stole the other woman's baby and said it was hers and they took it to King Solomon and his end result was, well, bring me a, a sword and he was going to cut the baby in half. And the real mother, the real mother, who didn't want her baby to suffer, said, no, she can have him because I don't want him harmed. And King Solomon, being the wise man that he was, knew that she, that was the mother because a mother does not want pain and suffering to come to her child. I will never, never know all that has happened to my daughter, the condition that her body was in. I can speculate what, has ha what happened to her body, but I have to believe in my God and believe that whatever was happening to her on a physical level. I have to believe that the Lord heard my prayer. He felt my heart those weeks that I was searching for her prior to that prayer and took her up. I have to believe that. I have to believe that he did not leave her here to suffer. She was a child of God. She gave herself to Christ. So she's under his grace. So I have to believe that I will see her again because he took her up swiftly. And that's what I hold on to. That is my beliefs. But because I believe that, that doesn't mean that I don't still struggle. Because one of the constant things that I grapple with and I have nightmares about it. 
And I really fussed with the Lord about this because he's my father. I, I can do that. Um, I have expressed my anger and my frustration with the fact with the fact that my daughter died alone. She died alone somewhere without me being able to be there by her side to shepherd her, to shepherd her into the next life. I, I, I grapple with that. And I don't know where to place that emotion. So when I shared with you all in my first video about being still and just standing, well, with respect to my daughter dying alone, somewhere prior to being disposed of in a remote area, uh, she was alone and I wasn't there. And that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart to no end. And there's no healing that. But one thing the pastor said, he said, and I just, I just received this word so much because it's true, because I'm living it right now, right now. He said, if the Lord, if after you ask the Lord, his answer will be either to change your circumstance or to change you. The Lord saw fit not to change the circumstance of taking my daughter. And those who know me intimately, I've never outwardly asked the question why, and I've never even fixed my mind to silently ask the Lord, why? Because I already knew the answer. So even when I prepared to fix myself to ask why, I already knew the answer. Why not you? There's no comeback for that because as a Christian, it could happen to any of us. When we're born again, you know, we want, we are being born into experiencing a Christ-like walk. And a part of that walk was terrible, terrible pain. So I could never ask the question because I know the answer is why not you as opposed to somebody else. But he saw fit to put it on me. And so I've just had to endure. So the Lord did not change my circumstance, but he has changed me. He has changed me. He has changed me. If you had knew me before losing my daughter versus who I am now, I am not the same person. Even down to my hair because I didn't know how to live like I lived prior to losing my daughter. I, I just, I didn't know how to live in my skin anymore because my world was so warped. Holidays, I, I just couldn't do holidays the same. My daughter, my, my youngest daughter and I, the world just did not look the same. In addition to the world not looking the same, there's always that pulling, that pulling that someone is missing. We're missing someone. We're missing my trees. She should be here. She's not here. And that, that, that's, that's always heavy on us, particularly around the holiday time. Um, 
but the Lord has also given us a, a strength, a strength and an endurance. And, and, and I, I thank him for that. I thank him for the peace of mind that he has given because it was very noisy for a long time. So, I'm going to end here. But my question to you today is, what is gripping you? What, what pain are you trying to grow past? And I say grow past because there is a growing, walking through tough circumstances. Um, are you making it through? Or are you standing? Is there something that perhaps I can offer to help you, how would you handle if God's will is totally opposite of what you desire? How would you handle it? Or let me ask you in this way. What pain has the Lord placed in your life? that you're grappling with and what are you doing to get through it I would love for you to share with me please leave a comment leave your, your story down below and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you'll get notifications from me but I am very interested in your story so let's continue to talk until next time Many blessings to you and yours.